1994, when Oasis released Definitely Maybe, the vinyl version contained one extra track that didn't appear on any other format. And the extra track was Sad Song, which became the new track 6 on Definitely Maybe, appearing after Columbia and bumping the album track listing up to 12 songs. And, in an interview with the NME, Noel explains why they added that track. He says, When we cut the vinyl version of this album on a single disc, the grooves were so close together that it was really quiet. So we went back to the record company and said, we can't put the vinyl out like this. And the way round it was to do a double album. But that meant we were a song short. So they said, you'll have to come up with another song by tonight. So Noel went into the studio with Owen Morris and recorded a really quick, very simple acoustic song after everything else had already been finished. So really, it was only ever an afterthought. It was a vinyl bonus track and it was never intended to be considered part of the original album. On Oasis's third album, on Be Here Now, they had 12 tracks, all of which were really long, so they didn't have that same problem and there is no vinyl bonus exclusive track. However, when it came to their second album, What's the Story Morning Glory, they did the same thing as with Definitely Maybe. They had 10 full songs, they also had the very long outro of Champagne Supernova and the two short snippets of the Swamp Song, which kind of made up an 11th song. So they had space for one more song. And this time, they decided to have a little bit of fun with the vinyl-only bonus track that they knew was coming up. Probably the biggest musical influence on Oasis was the Beatles, and something they would frequently do on their albums was to have one song sung by Ringo Starr, the drummer. This started out just as a bit of a daft novelty track, but over time, as people came to expect the Ringo song, it developed into more of a, a serious feature on the album, and Lennon and McCartney began writing songs specifically for Ringo to sing. The Ringo song on Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is a great example. It's With a Little Help From My Friends, which is probably one of the best songs on the album. The song Yellow Submarine from Revolver also seems to be an influence on Bonehead's Bank Holiday. Oasis had been absolutely rinsing Revolver at the time, and Yellow Submarine is the Ringo novelty song on that album. So, the Beatles having the massive influence that they did over Oasis, the band decided that this time, rather than doing a slightly rushed acoustic song, they planned out a novelty song, an Oasis Ringo song. However, they had just fired their drummer, Tony McCarroll. Alan White had only been with the band a couple of weeks, so was unlikely to be up for singing a novelty song. They had a hard enough time getting Gwigsy the bass player to speak, let alone sing. So that only left one band member as a suitable candidate, Paul Bonehead Arthurs. On the album, Bonehead's Bank Holiday was positioned similarly to Sad Song at the end of the B-side of the first disc. Coming in after the first Swamp Song excerpt, it became the new track 7, bumping, some might say, up to track 8 and making the Morning Glory album 13 tracks long on vinyl. Now, some of Noel Gallagher's songs with Oasis have really interesting, intricate, secret backstories. Don't Look Back in Anger being a really good example. The lyrics to Bonehead's Bank Holiday, however, are obviously just goofy lyrics that make people laugh, and that's it. Hey, no, it's Rob Milano from New York. Um, no real question. I just need the story of Bonehead's Bank Holiday. I just, I need it. I need to know. I need to know if there's, these are based on anything, if it's just a silly song, just anything you can give. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, I'm afraid it's just a silly, silly song that doesn't mean a great deal. Uh, and the reason it was called Bonehead's Bank Holiday was Bonehead was going to sing it, but he got so drunk before he was due to sing it that he couldn't actually fucking stand up, far less sing it. They are quite all right lyrics, but it's just, it's nonsense. It's a load of bollocks. Sorry if I've spoiled it for you. So, the track was written for Bonehead to sing, it was even called Bonehead's Bank Holiday, but 
for one reason or another, whether he was too drunk to do it properly or whether he just wasn't a good enough singer, Noel ended up singing it. But Bonehead and Liam also made it onto the track. Bonehead tells it like this. Liam takes me down the pub and we come back at midnight, legless, and there's Noel and Owen waiting for me to record my vocal. I've got Liam holding me up, holding the lyrics in front of my face. We're making up the words. Everyone's crying with laughter. Months later, I got a cassette through the post. It just had BBH written on it. Five hours of outtakes from Bonehead's Bank Holiday from Owen. I still play it a lot. So, all the racket in the background, all the uh, fucking mega and all the uh, Cornish accents and all that stuff in the background is actually a very, very drunk Bonehead and Liam in the coach house studio at midnight trying to record Bonehead's lead vocal. So Bonehead is on the track, but not singing the lead vocal as intended. He's just on there clowning around with Liam and jabbering away like an idiot. This, it was a ridiculous song. It was like stupid daft thing he used to play in the rehearsal room to the lads. And I thought it'd be great if Bonehead sang it. So I did the backing track, did a guide vocal and, you know, he took a cassette up and he listened to it. And I said, you up for it or what? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fucking up for it. And um, he went to the pub for a few drinks to, lo to loosen up before he sang it and came, fell back in here, fucking absolute shit faced. And uh, there is a great version of him trying to sing it where he's proper fucking rat ass. Because I think they're on, him and Liam are on the end, aren't they? Pissed up. Yeah, jibber jabbering, yeah. Well, that was, there's takes, there's endless takes of that shit. Bonehead's Bank Holiday really does stand out amongst the other tracks that were recorded for the Morning Glory sessions. And it doesn't stand out because it's an epic or anything like that. It stands out because it's so different. Oasis never recorded another song, to my knowledge, that sounded anything like this one. And there's a small hardcore of uh, conspiracy theorists, of which I might be one, that think this song and its very unusual arrangement for Oasis was actually them taking the mickey out of their Britpop rivals at the time, Blur. This was made just before their Battle of the Bands came to a head with the upcoming release of their next single, Roll With It, which was one half of the Battle of Britpop with Blur. And several people have noticed how unusually like a Blur song this track sounds. So those backing vocals that go la 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 could very easily have been sung by Damon Albarn, the lead singer from Blur, on any of their albums in the first half of the 90s. And another really interesting side note on that theory that this song was Oasis taking the mickey out of Blur is that Blur's current album at the time of recording was Park Life. And the fifth track on Park Life was a song called Bank Holiday. Even the arrangement seems a bit un oasis -y. Apart from Wonderwall, Bonehead's Bank Holiday is the only track on Morning Glory that doesn't have the standard Oasis wall of sound. Instead, going for a slightly thinner, perhaps a little bit more sparse, blur-like arrangement. And that becomes even more noticeable when you listen to the track with all the Bonehead and Liam gibberish stripped away and just listen to the backing track. And so, in the interests of showing you guys what that would sound like, I've decided to do a complete rebuild of the song from the ground up. But of course, I have no way of recreating all that spontaneous Liam and Bonehead stuff anyway, so this is going to be a version of the song with all that stuff stripped out for anyone who's curious and wants to hear what the song would sound like without it. Now, to my knowledge, Oasis never actually played Bonehead's Bank Holiday live. There are only two versions of the song that have ever been officially released, and I'm not aware of any third version even on bootleg. The first was, of course, the one that was released with Morning Glory in 95, and the second was an acoustic demo, I think it's a recording of Noel at a sound check somewhere, singing an earlier version of Bonehead's Bank Holiday with a different middle section. And, just for my own interest really, I've also decided to add back in that little middle section that only appears on the acoustic version. 
And so all that's left to do now is to play you through my complete rebuild of Bonehead's Bank Holiday from start to finish so you can hear what the instruments are doing with all the uh, drunken chatter removed. Take a train or a boat or 